A stock GI Yaris makes 195 horsepower at the wheels. GI Yaris with an Eventuri air intake, a Sydney Motorsport Engineering exhaust, and tuned on Ecutech makes 267 horsepower at the wheels. Now, upgrading to a GCG turbo, Kelvin Type A cams, Kelvin valve springs, end slide rocker retainers, and a world speed intake planum, how much power do you think it makes? Find out in this video, we talked to Ben about how he tuned it, what limitations were, and what you'd upgrade next. So we're here with Daz's GR Yaris Rally, and it's gone from just breathing mods, and then we did the upgrades with the World Speed Intake Plenum, yep. Kelford Cam, Springs, Dense Dodge Rocker Retainers, and the DCG Turbo Upgrade as well, the High Flow. So it's gone from what, 190 kilowatts? Just under 200 kilowatts on the baseline. So it arrived to us, we baselined it before Dense Dodge did all their work, we just, yeah, intake exhaust and tune. It was tuned by another company locally, did a great job. Tune was actually spot on and made solid power for a stock turbo setup. So yeah, we, we had a really, probably a solid point to start from that was gonna really show the gains versus a fairly average tune that we see on some of them, so. Yeah, and what you started out, Daz's whole goal for this was to have it as a street, track car every now yep. and then. Yep, and a good all-rounder. Yeah, and then Ecutech decision, he wanted to stay with that. Yep. He's understanding that it's still early days yeah, for it. Early days. Yep. So he didn't want to go for that whole 10 grand kind of Motec route. Uh, so there are limitations there with Ecutech and yeah, how yeah. have you found it? So it's a little bit harder. We're a Motec dealer, do a lot of Motec and we do some Cybex stuff as well. So they're the two players in that full ECU integrated replacement. Everything has its pluses and minuses, I guess. Daz wanted to retain that complete street ability. So he didn't want to lose the lane assist and a few of the other bits and pieces that you do lose with an aftermarket ECU. So the decision was he was happy with that and he was understanding the, the potential limitations. Being early days on any remapping of a factory platform, there's always roadblocks, I guess, because you're trying to basically walk across a tightrope blindfolded with your hands behind your back. Yeah. So right. you're reverse engineering what a company spent hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars on. Yeah. And you've got a small group of guys that are very smart, much smarter than me, trying to work out what it is, work out the language, and then rewrite it. So it's been difficult. Daz wanted to stay with stock fuel systems. So it's stock fuel pump, stock reg, stock injectors. It's completely factory. It's just got the turbo cams, plenum, and the breathing mods. So yes. I think it's been good. It's just been difficult getting through some of those loopholes and little things you have to jump over. Yeah, I guess now with the system being so much more complex, yeah. with all the efficiency they're trying to get yeah, out of yeah, exactly. the motors, yep. there's a lot of safety in there, yep. and you're trying to get around that yeah, in the best way possible. That's right. So we could go full cowboy. Like a lot of people are making good gains on these with turbo upgrades and whatnot. However, we like to always approach it balanced, particularly the customer wants to go to do circuit days or road racing as some people call it. That's a lot different to just going one, two, three on the street. With that in mind, the vehicle needs to be set up for, the calibration needs to be set up, sorry, in, in regards to long-term reliability around the track, constant heat loading, all that kind of stuff. So there are some things with the Ecutech we felt that we could have just full sand, max out all your talk to tables and go down and, and go away you go and you're not gonna hit any limits or protections, but then you actually don't know what's going on in the background. Got it. So. And then, yeah, how have you found going from, like most of the time you're just tuning, just breathing mods? Yeah, just stock turbo stuff. And then yeah. going up to the, the type A cams and you're yep. talking about how you can, yeah, you could push it a lot more. Yeah. And you've actually seen down that, that lower end range, you've actually lost yeah. that unsureness of what's going on with the fuel. Is that the main? There's a few things. The Fueling is on the limit and the logging is not spectacular in the Ecutech platform compared to some of the other options. Again, I'm not trying to rubbish it. It's, it. It is A, early days and B, they're limited by logging what the ECU will tell them. It's a hardware limitation, not their software in a lot of ways, in particular to the logging and what you can see. So a few things, down low, not wanting to smash heaps of torque into, it, into the thing. The boost control on the factory system is not great it's really slow to react Got it. compared to some of the other solutions we've used. Yep. That mixed with some of the logging stuff, we've pulled, we probably could gain a little bit more down low and possibly there would be no loss if it's set up like a full sand straight all in down low as hard as you can go. Yep. But that needs to be done bearing in mind you have, you, you have the knowledge of full control over everything. So all in all, it's a different type of drive. It's not that instant hit at three, three and a half, we're bang, and then it's all over at five and a half, you grab them for the next gear. Yeah. 
It's very linear now with the GCG turbo and the cams all the way out to 7600. So it's a beautiful curve. And then like even you're giving a little bit of way below four, four and a half, but it's all above that all the way up to 76 and like 30, 35 kilowatts, nearly 40 kilowatts at seven and a half grand. Yeah. So but it, let's just say you're going to, if you're going to go full send for the internet, everyone online yep. chasing those numbers, if you got rid of those safety factors, yep. what do you think it could kind of... If I had control over all the choices that were in the car? Yeah. Fuel, I, fuel, fuel. EC, like EC calibration. Yeah. I reckon it would have no losses down low. Yeah. Anywhere. Mm -hmm. And make humongous gains everywhere. And I think it would be an absolutely phenomenal setup. Yeah. Moving machine. Yeah. So we're limiting boost at the moment is about 20, it's 1.75 bar in the Ecutec. So about 24 pound. Okay. 24, 25 pound. So look, we're not we're not being shy, but I would put about 30 in it down the bottom. Got it. The motor will take it. Yeah. These are, these are crazy. Head starts, that's the other thing we did. Yeah, so it's, yeah. it's got all the good gear mm. and Dennis Lodge have done everything top to bottom except for basically pistons, rods and sleeves. So it's got everything done. And these things are as strong as an ox like that. Yeah. And you can lean on them within reason and, and with a solid calibration and they will just laugh and take it. Awesome. So yeah, if other people that are looking to get this done. Yeah. They come, come to you? Yeah, so come to me, come to Dense Dodge. Yeah. Uh, we've worked with these guys for years, closely on a few different platforms, these and Evos and a few other bits. So you can come to us and reach out on our socials. You can speak to these guys. They've facilitated this, so I would speak to them first regarding this setup. Their gear is good. They're very planned and methodical in the way they step through things, the same as us, and there needs to be a balanced setup, particularly if you've got goals of track work or just a clean street or, or whatever you're wanting to do. I think that's um, the thing. You, yeah. People always just think, oh, I saw this guy with this setup, but it really yep. depends on what you want to do with the car. Yeah, and your, fir your first question we always ask people, no matter if they're at just an exhaust and tune or they want to build a 1200 horsepower four cylinder, is what are your end goals? Yeah. And if everyone's on the same page and can sit down and go, okay, this is what I want to get. I may not have the budget or sometimes it's our job to say, well, you understand that this is what you're getting yourself into. Exactly, that trade-off with everything. Oh, 100%, and then A, do you have the funds to run it? Because running the car is more expensive than building it, as a lot of people don't realize. Do you have the funds to run it? Or do you really just want something that is fun and you don't want to get into the maintenance issues or the that kind of stuff that you don't see. Yeah, it's keep, keep the reliability, keep driving the yeah. car. And unless you've got a close yeah. friend that's been through it, mm. usually people are absolutely oblivious to this stuff. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. And mm. then that's why I let people know, if, you, if you're building these things, just understand this is what you're getting into. Yep. Like if you were to put a dog box or a sequential gearbox, great option, awesome fun, like playing a computer game. However, it comes with a little bit of noise, a little bit of maintenance, that kind of thing. So everything's a bit of give and take. It just needs to be something that everyone's on the same page. Everyone's happy to enjoy their car. That's what it comes down to. Have fun with it. I'm yeah, sure exactly. Daryl's going to have fun with I it. I think so too. It's a cool setup. Yeah, it's a wicked, wicked car. So yeah, thanks for watching. No worries, and guys. Stay tuned. Right up. Cheers. So sport is same as the law. Yep and then track drops a boost of it, yeah. Yep, but we're not running the hips, and then literally the only other changes are you and clouding between sport and track, the rest of these.